This is the OG art teacher coming to you from Fort Worth, Texas. Um, today I am going to show you how to draw a value scale. Um, nine step. So each square is a step. Um, essentially what we're going to be working on is trying to use one pencil, the, a 2B pencil, or a colored pencil, um, to create a step-by-step -step fade. A fade is where you hold, like you basically push down really, really, really hard, and then as you move away from that dark area, you lift up your pencil more and more and leave less and less pressure. And as you can see, this is where the most pressure is, and down here is where the least pressure is. And that just means how hard you're pushing down with the pencil. Um, go ahead and grab a piece of paper. You can use any kind of paper to do this and other practices. Um, if you're getting a lot of junk mail, or if you have like recycling, or cardboard, or the back of envelopes, those would be great things to use instead of perfectly blank paper. Um, notebook paper, old homework, um, you know, pretty much anything that you consider scrap would be great. Um, okay, so you're going to start out by drawing a rectangle. A rectangle is two parallel lines, or I guess parallel lines, and they are closed off by lines that are parallel to each other. So a nine step value scale is going to look like what I showed you before. You're gonna divide out that rectangle into nine equal-ish spaces. Ooh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have a little extra, so I'm just gonna end it and erase off. If you don't have enough, you can always go in and add an extra square at the end. Uh, we're going to start with one being the brightest. So add a circle toward one. Add a circle and draw some little arrows pointing toward your value scale. This is going to start telling you that light is brightest the closer the object is to the light source. So this is our light source. A light source can be anything like a flashlight or the sun or a lamp or um, the light filtering through a window or other things that I'm sure you can come up with. I usually start on nine. This is the furthest away from the light source, so it is going to be the darkest. Um, if I were drawing, I would have my pencil like this, but I'm shading, so I'm moving the pencil and I'm using my index finger on the end of the pencil and kind of supporting it between my other three fingers and my thumb. You're gonna be coloring in kind of a sideways motion um, I try to do a circular motion so that I can cover the space better. Um, using a blending stick like one of these would make this look a lot better and I will show you what that looks like, but they are not necessary. They are really like, I mean, if you want everything to look extra smooth and extra beautiful then it might be necessary for you but um, we are currently and this will date the video in quarantine from the COVID pandemic that is occurring here in the United States. As I go down the row I am lifting up my pencil a little bit during in each square to make it lighter than the one previous to it. So one way that you can do that or practice that 
is by doing the fade that we talked about. Um, it's just like getting a haircut on the side where it's darkest and then goes down light lighter. A fade is going to be where you use the tip of the pencil pointing toward the darkest area and as you move away from the darkest area you start to pick up the pencil more and more so that it leaves less and less on the surface of the paper or whatever you're using. This is not really possible to do with markers. You could do it with crayon, colored pencil, any dry material should work exactly the same. Um, so going back in, I'm going to press down really, really hard in my 9 to make it look really, really dark. And then go back in with my 8 to make it a little less dark. You want each number to look different than the number numbers it is in between. So I'm going to jump over to 4 and use very light pressure. This is, is where it can get difficult to cover the page and it looks like I'm picking up some of the little bits on my table like a rubbing. And then one is just going to be left completely empty because it is the brightest. So I'm going to move back up a little bit and try to make sure that each of these is slightly darker than the one before it. It can be, I have students who have a lot of difficulty getting this range to look different. Um, the mid range is kind of the diff most difficult because it's really easy to press down as hard as you want and it's a little bit easier to press down very very little but it can be hard to manage the middle tones. So again you're going from lightest to darkest or darkest to lightest. I tend to do the lowest numbers as the lightest so that it can kind of remember like like the least amount of pressure is the lower side of things. Um, and that's pretty much it for a nine step value scale. That's what it looks like up close. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when I use a blending stick. So here's a well used blending stick. Um, on my pencil you can, and on yours if you're using it on its side you'll see that there's a dark line that starts to happen. The wood of the pencil is a natural blending stick. Um, so with a blending stick, you would literally just go in there and kind of smooth it out. It'll help fill up the any white spots that were left. Um, if you were using a blending stick, you could even leave number two totally blank and just use what's left of the blending stick um, to fill it in. With the fade, the blending stick, same deal. This is what really helps with doing skin tones and shading on a face. It can really help blend. Um, you can also use your finger to blend. A lot of art teachers would like be kind of unhappy about me telling you that because it's not actually like the most technical way to do it but I always teach my students that I teach both ways like I think it's important to do what works easier for you and if you don't have access to a blender then use use your finger um, there's no reason not to use what you've already got um, as far as a blending stick goes, you could also maybe roll up a paper towel or a um, piece of construction paper. I think printer paper is too smooth for that. So value scales, I would suggest doing these multiple times. I have done them probably hundreds of times at this point in my career and you will get better at it.